Hi guys, it's Krista from Fleeing With A Purpose and today I'm going to do a video answering all of your questions. If you're new here, my name is Krista and I'm a child care provider for up to five children and on my channel you'll find tips and tricks, all things related to child care, shopping hauls, and the odd family vlog. So I'm going to answer a couple of more questions today for you. So the first question is about my writing table. How do you manage a multi-age group and how often do I change out the material? So usually when I'm thinking about the material, I'm thinking more along the lines of what is safe. So is it chokeable or can I trust the child with a pair of scissors? And if the answer is no, then I'll try to just think of a different way to implement the same idea. So for instance, sometimes I'll put out Play-Doh scissors instead of actual scissors. So if I have a younger group and I don't feel that I can trust them, I'll just put a pair of Play-Doh scissors and they can still practice that skill and I feel more comfortable with the items being left out. Changing the writing center really depends on the interests of the children. Sometimes I just have children that love the writing station and they spend lots of time there naturally and sometimes they're really engaged because of the different activities that we've put out and some activities are more popular than others and so i really just pay attention to what's happening with the children if i feel like the area is not being used to its full potential then sometimes i'll just swap out the materials and see if that changes things so I just wanted to quickly show you a couple of ideas. If you need to change out your materials, it doesn't have to be complicated. You can just literally have a long list of ideas that you can put out. And if you see that that area is not being used, just change out your materials. And most of the time you'll see a difference. This is a boogie board. I found this one at Costco a couple of years ago and children love to draw on it. And to erase it, you just have to press the top button so this is always a really fun thing to put out and it just gives the children a chance to practice writing in a fun way. I also like to put out these little magnetic writing toys. So this pen has a little magnetic tip and it has little magnetic balls in it and children practice writing numbers or letters with the magnetic strip and the little balls come to the top of the surface. That's another fun one. Another fun one that can be theme related is right now we're doing an ocean theme. So I just find a little bucket at Easter time, I found these at the dollar store and I just put letters inside them and the children can open them and then try printing that letter. So this adds a little element of surprise and children love opening and closing containers. So this is super easy. At the beginning, I just set out some little notebooks and some words and some stickers and then I can change it up and put something like this out. It's really easy to just quickly change things up just to make it more inviting. Another simple idea is to just give them a coloring page with some crayons. I love these little Mr. Sketch twistables. They're vibrant colors and they don't break as easily because they're in plastic. So that's another fun one. Another fun idea is using the Melissa and Doug water wows. So you basically just fill up the little pens with water and then they practice writing on the letter and then there's a picture underneath to discover. Once they paint with water all across this, a little picture will appear. So this is another really fun one. I have some really fun resin letters and I have a local maker that makes these for like $25 a set. And so I love to have little sets like this and you can just use a piece of cardstock and the children will just find the match and place it on top. So that's a super easy low prep activity as well. Here's another set that I have. This one just has little sprinkles inside. This is another one that I love. It just has a little wooden pencil and the children practice tracing the letters. So that's super fun. I also have a set of these Lakeshore Learning. These are quite expensive, but I've had them for years. So the children just drag the little magnetic ball through the letter. This is really good fine motor practice and it takes a lot of skill and patience to be able to complete this letter. So there's lots of different ways that you can change up your center. So if you are seeing that it's not being used, just change it up really quick. And I bet you you'll see the children gravitate towards that area again. 
Another question is, I notice when I watch your videos that you don't have a calendar. Do you do calendar? So I don't do calendar during my circle time. I feel like for the age group that I have in my program, it's not developmentally appropriate to do calendar time. And so there's different ways to teach time and that's more throughout the things that we do each day. So um, after lunch, we go to bed. After snack, we go outside. These are simple ways to just incorporate the concept of time to our youngest learners. I don't really do a formal weather, but I do incorporate weather into our day when we talk about what's happening outside, just naturally in some of the songs that we sing during circle time, depending on the weather. But it's not something that I specifically do every single day. Another question is, how do you keep the little ones from taking the letters and dumping them all over or taking a few and leaving them all over the play area. So this definitely happens. It's just something that we continually work on. There's certain areas of the classroom that I have set up. So um, my science table is one of them. So if I see a child removing some of the science materials from the science table, I'll say, oh, that belongs at the science table. Can you please put it back? And then I'll help them bring it back. Same thing goes for the writing center. But if they're bringing something from the dramatic play area and they're bringing it across the room to play somewhere else and they're using it for a good purpose, then sometimes I allow that. I think there's a real good balance between allowing some flexibility, um, moving things around the classroom, but also there are some items such as the writing table or, or the science table that those things need to stay where they belong. So I hope that makes sense. So that's how I handle those things in my classroom. The next question is about baby proofing. Although most of the things in my classroom are baby proofed, such as baby gates and plugs, I do have some things that little ones can get into that does require learning, such as drawers that I have materials in that they aren't to touch, or things that I have on the walls that they can easily touch and take down. And that's just a part of teaching the children that there are some things that we are to look at and not touch, and it just takes time. Somebody also asked me how often I change up my themes. So typically I do a once a month theme, although in the summertime I tend to do one theme for the whole summer, just because we spend most of our time outside. And I do a monthly theme because it takes quite a while to set up your room. And I do find that the children are usually pretty interested for the entire month. In addition to what I have out for them for free play, we also have lots of different activities going on within our classrooms. So I usually find that a month is a perfect amount of time for us to explore a topic. And sometimes the topics are kind of broken down into mini topics, so like fall can be can be broken down by a week of apples, a week of pumpkins, leaves. So there's all different ways to stretch out a theme, but keep your materials interesting. So I hope I was able to answer those questions. And if you ever have any other questions that you'd like me to share with you, just comment below and I'd be happy to add them to one of my future videos. I'm Krista with Playing With Purpose. I'll see you next time.